Lady, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen of the Doomosphere, it is Saturday, November 26th, and I'm sure all of you must be wiped from protesting at Amazon warehouses and or just overall sick of paying hyperinflated prices. So in today's presentation, I'm just going to do a rapid fire roundup of climate and economy news, mostly climate. I am on the side of the aisle that agrees that we do in fact live in a heat generating civilization, which I will cover in an article today in some sense. And there are no solutions unless we can dial back 8 billion people, reorganize our entire energy energy infrastructure, decarbonize everything. And even then the aerosols that are keeping us cool will fall from the sky. We also have El Nino and built in feedback loops, which will accelerate our transition into collapse. So not trying to say it's all doom and gloom, but it's all doom and gloom. Today's first article comes from fizz.org. Someone on my last video or two tries to, many in fact, tries to debate with me and say that heat waves haven't been increasing. Those people are just in some severe form of denial. And for that, I'm sorry. Climate change is increasing the frequency of temperatures of heat waves. This is from a study. California awakens to the worsening risk of extreme climate events. Researchers are shedding new light on last year's anomalies in the extreme Pacific Northwest heat wave. One study published this week said such heat waves could become 20 times more likely if carbon emissions continued unabated. Another said they be, may be nearly 10 degrees hotter. So... There was a heat wave in July 2021. Um, parts of Oregon, Washington, some of you folks are up there. British Columbia, uh, Canada saw its highest temperature on record, 121.3 degrees. Such an event would have been virtually impossible in the 1950s, but atmospheric warming has already increased the probability of about 0.5% chance per year. According to a new study out Columbia University, published Thursday in the journal Nature Climate Change, should warming pass 2 degrees Celsius, which we are flying towards, the upper limit set by the IPCC, that could soon soar to a 10% chance per year as soon as 2050. The single biggest control on how bad heat waves get in excess and how bad they currently are is the amount of CO2 we put in the atmosphere, the warming blanket we put on ourselves. There's really only one solution to the problem of putting more carbon dioxide, which is to stop doing it. Surprise. Moving on. Everyone talks about reforesting, but in fact, animals are key to restoring the world's forests. Long-term data set reveals as UN climate talks come to close in Egypt, biodiversity talks begin in Montreal with attention is focused on restoration as a solution to the twin issues roiling our, our planet. Side note, is Paul going to this? Forests soak up atmospheric carbon dioxide and simultaneously create habitat for organisms. So far, the efforts to keep help forests bounce back from deforestation have typically focused on one thing, trees over anything else. But a new report un recover uncovers a powerful yet largely underlooked driver of forest recovery, animals. Animals, the study by international team by Max Planck Institute of Animal Behavior, Yale School of Environment and New York Botanical Garden, the Smithsonian Tropical Research, examined a series of regenerating forests in the central Panama spanning from 20 to 100 years, and what they found was that the long-term data set reveals that animals, by carrying a wide variety of seeds into deforested areas, are key to the recovery of tree species' richness and abundance to old growth levels only after 40, 70, 40 to 70 years of regrowth. Animals are our greatest allies in deforest, reforestation, says Daisy Ditt, a tropical ecologist from the MBIAB, and study's senior author. Our study prompts a rethink of a reforestation efforts to be more than just about establishing plant communities. We should consider the wider ecosystem as well as features in landscape and so on and so forth. Seed dispersal by animals is a key to forest expansion in the tropics. Over 80% of tree species can be dispersed by animals which transport seeds. Not really a surprise there, but just some good clarification. Moving on. Um, hedge fund giant Elliott 
something, somebody warns gloom, glooming hyperinflation could lead to global societal collapse, as if we don't have enough to worry about. Elliot contends that markets have not fallen far enough and the world is hurtling towards the worst financial crisis since World War II. The executives at the leading hedge fund Elliot Management Corp said that this is uh, we're heading towards this, and it's led by billionaire Paul Singer and Jonathan Pollock, absolutely awful people, told its clients that investors should not assume they've seen everything, and because they've been through the peaks and troughs of the 1987 crash, the dot-com boom and bust, and blah, blah, blah. It added that extraordinary period of cheap money is coming to an end has made a possible set of outcomes that would be at or beyond the boundaries of entire post-World War II period. The report later said that the world is on a path to hyperinflation and which could lead to global societal collapse or civil international strife. We are going to see this, I can guarantee it. Luckily though, Greta Thunberg and 600's others activists sue Sweden for climate inaction. Lawsuit comes as Sweden's new right government faces mounting criticism or over climate goals. I don't need to read this guys, it's pretty, um, pretty self-explanatory. There's never been such a large scale case in the Swedish legal system. Uh, legal action has been worked for two years, comes as Sweden news right wing, whatever, comes criticism. And uh, Mo Mo Moa Widmark, a 19 year old student, said she was taking part in Friday's demonstration because the climate crisis is worrying and sca scary. We're headed for catastrophe. Doom. All right, meat sauce, let's move on. Good old Ottawa. I know Paul's close to there. Rolls out a 1.6 billion plan to adapt to climate change. To adapt, there is no adapting. The Canadian government on Thursday unveiled a 1.2 billion American dollars plan to help create to help the country deal with the looming dangers <clears throat> in the warming world, such as floods, wildfires, and extreme heat. The so-called adaptation strategy will fund programs to help Canadians shield themselves from heat waves, so on and so forth. Um, Climate change is hitting communities all right across America, I mean Canada and America. Emergency Preparedness uh, Minister Bill Blair told a news conference, we're seeing an, the storm, the Hurricane Fiona hit, um, caused a ton of damage, said that it was just a taste of what's to come. According to the government, annual costs and natural disasters in Canada could rise to 154 billion dollars by 2030 where do we come up with 15.4 billion dollars we just print it duh and buy more things stuff and things because this is hyper capitalism thanksgiving sales overcome inflation gloom hits 5.3 billion dollars they spent three more percent online on thanksgiving day this year a new report showed but yeah, Thanksgiving sales hit $5.29 billion, which is uh, people buying strollers and speakers, outdoor grills, take your barbecue, get the kids out of school. And Black Friday is expect expected to bring in $9 billion from online sales. More stuff. It has no input on underwater tsunamis created by calving glacier calving calls vigorous ocean mi mixing this also from physics.org i'm not even going to pretend to know i know all the science going on here but essentially um what they researchers have identified is off the coast of antarctica watch glaciers disintegrate and their measurements went off the scale as well as witnessing disruptions on the ocean surface the recorded internal underwater tsunamis as tall as a house a phenomenon that has been Previously missed, missed in the understanding of ocean mixing and computer models led by the British Atlantic Survey and published in Science Advances, the internal tsunamis are an important factor, factor of inter ocean mixing, mixing which affects life in the ocean, excuse me, temperature at different depths, and how much ice in the ocean can melt. Ice in the Antarctic flows to the coast along the glacier-filled valleys. Some of the ice melts, melts into the ocean, breaks off as icebergs ranging in small chunks two upward sizes of a country, um, and they took measurements and found that uh, the William Glacier typically has one or two calving events per year, and the team estimated this one broke off around 78,000 meters of ice around the area of 10 football pitches, uh, with 
so yeah, it's big. Before it broke away, the, tom the temp water temperature was cooler at around 50 to 100 meters in depth and warmer below this. After the calving, the change dramatically with temperature much more even across depths. This was remarkable to see, says lead researcher, to be at the right place at the right time. And it causes big waves. It also causes waves inside the ocean. When they break these internal waves, causes the sea to mix, and this affects life in the sea, how warm at different depths. So yeah, underwater tsunamis, just like they said, ocean mix mixing influences where nutrients are in the water, and that matters for ecosystems and biodiversity. We thought we would we knew what caused this mixing in summer. We thought it was mainly wind and, and tides, but it never actually occurred to us that iceberg calving would cause internal tsunamis and mix things up so substantially. Okay, kind of a new uh, serendipitous discovery. However, we are still entangled with our own ball of confusion. Uh, Russia bombed Ukraine, as you may know, like six million people without power. Still on Friday, after airstrikes on its energy grid and they're telling residents to stock up on water food and warm clothing um, nato secretary also general jens stolensberg said there would be no lasting peace in ukraine if russia won the war that's kind of a given right no-brainer adding that the West western military alliance would not back down in support for kiev they sure won't back down because we're sending 400 mil more million dollars to them meanwhile our prices are skyrocketing we can't seem to uh forgive student loan debt things we can afford guys things we can afford things we can't we can also possibly ban semi-automatic semi weapons. This from the Washington Times, moving on. Biden's new climate change rules would smack government, government contractors with a $604 billion bill. So I already read this, and this, the, the gist is that small businesses could be shut out of lucrative government contracts because of massive compliance costs under proposed rules. So this rule would make the first national government, is the first national government to require major federal contractors to set climate goals in line with the 2015 Paris Accord. But they say that private sectors could, could eliminate 85% of the greenhouse gases associated with the federal supply chain. That's more than twice the emissions generated from 300,000 buildings and 600,000 vehicles the federal over, uh, government owns outright, the White House said in a fact sheet. So requiring a major federal supplier to disclose emissions and risk strengthens our supply chain, blah, blah, blah. But the compliance costs to actually make this into fruition and, and comply with regulations as well as release data on the carbon emissions built or exposed from these projects, unless small businesses are going to lie, uh, only the big businesses will be able to pick up these costs because small businesses have a razor, razor thin profit margins. You can't go hire, you know, Craigslist uh, Mexican crew to come out, you know, that does your roof to suddenly install solar panels and do it all on a carbon neutral or carbon free way. Are you kidding me? Get real. So it'll just benefit big businesses. The rich get richer, um, and those compliance costs will get paid passed to American taxpayers through higher prices for government contracts. Jumping through compliance hoop burns that must be recovered through higher prices. Simple economics. Don't forget the money spent on government contracts belongs to the taxpayer, not federal agencies nor Congress. So, yeah, this is a shit show. I, I really don't want to read any more of this, but companies that do more than 50 million in annual business with the federal government would have to establish carbon reduction targets that line up with this goal. This would affect 1,353 entities or 389 or 29% would qualify for small business. Yeah, it's just a mess. Um, we can't get it together. U.S. and China, moving on, are still pointing at f fingers at each other. This from MIT Technology Review. The UN climate talks ended in a lackluster deal. Shame. Shame. The UN uh, climate conference wrapped up. Um, stretch talks. The talks stretched 48 hours past their scheduled conclusion. Uh, <laughs> a question to my editor. The UN isn't hitting deadlines, so do I still have to? For real. Stop paying your bills. I mean, stop paying your credit card debt, guys. Just drop it. The most notable outcome uh, the conference establishes a fund to help poor countries. Why it matters um, is because, you know, China is... A quarter of CO2 in our atmosphere is red, white, and blue. <laughs> you know, China's caught up. Our base, almost. 
But we lifted them out of poverty, and the rising tide rises all boats, right? Neoliberal capitalism has no ends. Climate change is causing tons of back frozen bacteria to enter water. I think I covered this already, but I'm just going to repeat it. Climate change is a word tossed around too lightly. But we think of great, but uh, Aaron Edwards of University of UK told BBC, we think of glaciers as a huge store of frozen water, but the key lesson from this research is they are also ecosystems in their own right. Ice sheets melt, temperature increasing, frozen bacteria can potentially reach warm waters, multiply. These bacteria can previously unknown and severely impact us. Led by glacial hydrolo hydrologist Ian Stevens of the Aarhus University in Denmark, Researchers found an average of tens of thousands of microbes in each milliliter, milliliter of water. And the research claims that more than 100,000 tons of bacteria could be released in the next 80 years. Great. Nuclear fallout, um, bacteria-ridden waters, crop failure, mass migration. I'm only telling you because I care. Because we have the world's skinniest skyscraper now complete, and its interiors are remarkable, guys. Just... Just beautiful. The New York studio Saulfield has revealed and unveiled the interiors of the Steinway Tower, a 1,428-foot-tall tower overlooking Central Park. The 91-story sky skyscraper, also known as 111 West 57th Street, contains 46 full floors and duplex residencies, which you will never go to and visit in your life, most likely, because we are might be experiencing the seventh mass extinction, not the sixth, as a true decrease in the abundance of organisms is from SciTech Daily. Basically, they've shown from this research that we've shown a true decrease in the abundance of organisms and that most dinosaurs famously disappeared 66 million years ago at the end of the Cretaceous period. Prior to that, a vast majority of Earth's creatures were snuffed out between the Permian and Triassic period roughly 252 million years ago. But thanks to the efforts of University of California Riverside, UCR, Virginia Tech, now known it's now known that a similar extinction happened around 550 million years ago during the Idicare... Edia Karen period. Excuse me. The discovery is documented in the proceedings of National Academy of Sciences. Although it's unclear whether this re represents a true mass extinction, the percentage of organisms lost is similar to these other events, including the current ongoing one. In bold, ongoing one. The researchers believe environmental changes are blamed, blamed to loss of approximately 80% of all Edicarian creatures. So we might have had another extinction. We're going through another one now. Is it up for debate? Potentially. The destroyer USS Zumwalt has in completed extensive testing before being equipped with hypersonic missiles. Because the climate crisis isn't real, missiles and bombs are way more important. With a range of 2,700 kilometers, um, got this big, nasty, triangular looking, hexagonal looking US destroyer. Uh, commissioned in 2016, three years after launch in 2021, uh, it received hypersonic missiles, and it'll still. It will still get hypersonic missiles in 2029. So it's tested. It's working. I think it's nuclear powered. It can run by itself. Don't quote me on that. I've heard about this. Luckily, though, we're smart enough, right? We branched off from chimpanzees. We're smarter than them. Brain, gut, immune system were fine-tuned after split ancestor from chimpanzees. This is from phys.org. Summary is... Our brains, are bigger, and our brains are bigger and our guts are shorter than our eight peers. And they identified a group of human DNA sequences driving changes in brain development, digestion, and immunity seem to evolve rapidly after our family line split, split from chimpanzees, but before we split with the Neanderthals. A lot of the traits we think is uniquely human and human-specific probably appearing during that time and the 7.5 million years since the split with our common ancestors. We share the chimpanzee, says Craig Lyle, PhD, assistant professor of molecular genetics and bio microbiology in the Duke School of Medicine. Specifically, the DNA sequences in question um, have been dubbed the human ancestor quickly evolved regions, or hackers, pronounced like hackers, regulate genes, not very catchy, but, you know, it's, I guess it's all right. It's a science paper. There are switches that tell nearby genes when to turn on and off. The findings appeared November 23rd in the Journal of Cell. The rapid evolution of these regions, not rapid enough, apparently, um, seems to have served as a fine-tuning regular, regulatory control. More switches were added to the human system. Um, so we seem to especially... Sp 
we seem especially specific in causing the genes to turn on. We just think in certain cell types, certain types of developments are genes that turn on when the environment changes in some way. A lot of this genomic innovation was found in brain development and the GI tract. We see lots of regulatory elements that are turning on these issues. These are turning issues where humans are refining genes and expressing at those levels. Did you also know that some feces float and sink because of the gut biome, because of what bacteria you have in your stomach? That's a little side note. And I'm, I'm going to close off this news roundup. The mainstream media has a has a delightful way of attempting to greenwash you and sell you on this big um, hopium dream that we're going to magically convert our lives over uh, to zero emissions. But the truth is we're not. And it's always fanciful finding articles that really... And that our corporate paid media, oh, this is actually an independent media, but it's they're they're relisted on a, on MSN and other sites that really just boldly tell the truth. And again, I'm not going to go through this, but I like the frank, the frankness, the sincerity. And so I'm going to read the renewable energy transition is failing. This is an opinion piece, despite the re all the renewable energy trans investments in that six hundred dollar billion dollar bill we're going to be placed on uh, contractors. Actually, global and taxpayers, global greenhouse gas emissions keep increasing. This is due to economic growth. I'm going to pause right here. Any politics you like to talk about, right or left, who's left, the ideologies, it's all banter. It's all BS. It doesn't, the overarching message is um, that's all caca, all right? We, it takes materials, energy, um, fossil fuels to build all of the plans, any plans enacted by left or right. Okay, so you're wasting your breath. While renewable energy has been expanded in several recent years, world energy has ballooned even more, with the difference being supplied by fossil fuels. The more the world economy grows, the harder it is for the additions of energy, renewable energy, to actually turn the tide by replacing energy from fossil fuels rather than add, adding to it. So you guys can already know what this is about, is... The materials dilemma is renewable energy sources, fossil fuels to renewable energy sources, is our increasing need for minerals and metals. The World Bank, IEA, IMF, McKinsey and Company have all issued reports warning of this growing problem. Vast quantities of minerals and metals will be required not just for making solar panels and wind turbines, but also for batteries, electric vehicles, and new industrial equipment, and that runs on electricity rather than carbon-based fuels. And some of these already are already showing signs of increasing scarcity. According to the World Economic Forum, the average cost of producing copper has risen over 300% in the recent years, with copper ore has dropped 30%. Optimistic assessments of material challenges suggest there are enough global reserves for a one-time build-out of all the new devices and infrastructure needed, assuming some substitutions, substitutions with, for example, li lithium batteries will eventually be replaced by more abundant elements like iron. But what exactly, what does the society do as the first generation of devices and infrastructure ages and needs replacement? A circular co economy? A mirage. So he points out this, this really false dichotomy, we think, system where we can have a circular economy and, um, you know, keep recycling things. Just not going to happen. Um, and not to mention climate change is hindering our ability to actually transition with heat waves in China, uh, floods, storms, nuclear pl pan plants being shut down, uh, heavy rain and flooding again. And it closes out with this. We need a realistic plan for energy descent instead of foolish dreams of internal consumer abundance by means other than fossil fuels. But how about those Black Friday sales? Currently, the political-rooted insistence, insistence on continued economic growth is discouraging truth-telling and serious planning for how to will, live well with less. My channel is all truth-telling. And on that note, you create a realistic channel. You, you create a channel about reality you will get suppressed. Maybe I'll get to a thousand subs. 2023, we're on the way. And on the same note, another opinion, commentary, and fortune this guy has written, R Paul Pullman has written another one. Um, corporate greenwashing is all the rage. So uh, the headline, so obviously he's on to uh, catching the lie as it leaves 
our leaders' mouths. The world need, needs a Marshall Plan to fight climate change, and politicians are failing to show ambition. I'm not going to read this one either. I'm just going to um, read it just a section or two. Uh, COP27, um, climate talks ended. There's no clear plan to deliver 1.5 degrees. There never was. Um, and the Charm deal doesn't include a, a commitment to phase out all fossil fuels or any guarantee that emissions will peak by 2025. This is suicide. Current national carbon reduction emissions put us closer to a three degree rise. Game over. Game over. And a powerful group of blockers, mainly oil-rich governments and companies, were out in force. Those were the bright spots. By creating a new fund for loss and damage by rich countries, by are finally taking some financial responsibility. Um, let's hope the money follows. Not much hope now after COVID. Um, and governments are committed to methane cuts, so they say. Though, here's the point. However, the urgency of the crisis still... still lost on many of our political leaders. Collectively, they are failing to deliver the ambition and action on which our planet and future depend. This situation is not growing, going to magically improve. Next year's COP28 uh, will be held in the oil-rich United Arab Emirates. So we went from Egypt to United Arab Emirates for a climate talk. The COP is game is over. Mr. Beckwith, don't ever go to COP again. Boycott it. Be, do the smart thing. There'll be a no great superpower to save us. Despite diplomatic baby steps between Washington and Be Beijing, we are not cooperating. The cooperation will be limited as long as Russian tanks are in Ukraine. America fears Taiwan security. Yep, it's a big issue. Even with the U.S. and Australia and Brazil lack the table. Ongoing troubles in the global economy. High inflation. Yeah. Threaten to push global warming to agendas. Even though tackling climate change is the best way to stabilize food and energy prices, here's the here's the point I already businesses literally can't afford to sit back and wait for politics to get its act together. Climate is not just an environmental issue, it's the economy, stupid. Extreme floods, heat waves, wildfires, hurricanes cost billions. They send impoverished nations into debt, crippling supply chains, disrupting global trade, and destroying labor force. Whether you're a C-suite executive investor or WTO, you have an interest in getting the world into a more stable path. Or do you? Or are you more concerned with Cyber Monday. The shift to a low carbon economy can add trillions of dollars to the global growth each year and create millions of jobs. But I just read that we need to stop the growth paradigm. See this whole schizophrenic thing, we cannot get it together. We cannot get it together even when we have to. And so as politics stalls, businesses can still push ahead. You know, I just I'm going to I'm going to close out. I'm done reading this garbage. Um, you can't fight with stupid either. I made a comment on an artist, pretty well-known artist, French Kiwi Juice, and I made a comment regarding um, him flying around, you know, playing gigs and tours, and his equipment seemed to have gotten stalled in one of the airports, and I just said, you shouldn't be flying. And I got a whole barrage of comments from fans, um, like this was a surprise, indicating that, uh, you know, He's doing more good than me. What have I ever done? I'm just spreading negativity around. I mean, this is the point. We haven't we haven't branched that far from chimpanzees. Flying and having children is some of the worst things you can do. And I say this as I go out in public and see men my age with multiple new children. I am sorry. Just doing my best to expose the truth and inform you of what's happening. Again, start a realist, start a channel about reality and you will be suppressed. But it's fun, and it makes life worth living. All right. Thanks, you little meat sauce miracles. Hit like and subscribe, and enjoy your weekend. I'll talk to you soon. See ya.